I have a confession to make. I committed a crime. In my defense, it was a really boring day at work and I decided to have a little bit of fun. I knew that my friend Ben was just about to graduate and he was waiting on his exam results. I sent him an email asking for a copy of his ID because the university is having some issues with verifying his identity and if he's not going to do that in time, he's not going to get his exam results in time. Except I sent this email as the university. I changed the sender email address to an official university email address. The email asked Ben to submit his ID to another email address because staff are working over time and they just really wanted to make sure that he gets those results in time. See, that email address was actually mine. Not even 10 minutes later, I get a response and guess what? It's a photocopy of his ID. So I called Ben. Did you by any chance just um, send the uni your ID? Uh, yeah, I did. It was really weird. They emailed me at like midnight and I just sent it. How do you know that? I don't, but I'm currently working on that uh, fishing video that I was telling you about. Did you just spoof me? Exactly. What I did to Ben is called spoofing and it's a fishing technique. Fishing, broadly speaking, is the art of pretending to be someone else or something else that people trust to get things out of those people. Phishing can be emails, they can be phone calls, they can be messages on Instagram or any other social media. For example, it can be an email from someone who's pretending to be your bank asking you for your details so that they can sort out some issue for you. A phishing message can be Instagram support supposedly asking you to confirm your account by visiting another link uh, or else your account will disappear. Of course, Ben is a dear friend of mine, so I'm not going to do anything terrible with his ID. I'm not going to take out a loan in his name so that he can buy Bitcoin or so that I can buy Bitcoin, really. <laughs> Due to security concerns, I'm not actually able to show you how I did that because as they say, teach a man to fish and then the man will fish the rest of the world. But just so you know, it didn't take me more than 15 lines of code, probably. Cool. So now we know that phishing is not very good. So how do we spot phishing? One giveaway is a weird sender. It can be an email address that kind of looks like your school email address, but not really. Though, as we saw with Ben's story, an email address can be spoofed. Another quite important thing is paying extra attention to emails that you didn't expect or messages that you didn't expect. For example, it could be a message to submit your tax return for the year, but you don't even have a job. Or for example, it's a message to pay your mobile bill, but you're actually using a different provider. People who commit these crimes, they're counting on you not to spot the details. So do spot the details, or at least try to. If you're not really sure, and it looks like it could be coming from a legitimate source, check whether you've received similar things in the past, either from that same email address or somewhere else, and check what those messages look like, what the format of them looks like, what the colors look like. All of these things can help you spot fix. Poor grammar and spelling, that's kind of an obvious giveaway. If you think about the government or you think about like any social media company, they have dozens if not hundreds of people working for them, writing these emails, spell checking everything. They're not going to let something slip that just doesn't look good, you know? Mismatched URLs. I will get to what it actually is in just a second, but this is actually how Ben could have avoided being fished had he checked for mismatched URLs. This is an unexpected email from Morrison Supermarket. Their website is normally morrisons.co.uk. But as you can tell, the address it comes from does not match that URL we have in mind at all. In addition, if you hover over this button, you can also tell that it doesn't take you to Morrison's, but instead some other odd site. In a similar way, Ben's email asks him to contact someone with a different email address than the official university edacuk one. See, with spoofing, you can fake the sender, but you can't actually receive anything in that spoofed address. That's why spoofers will try to get you to click an external link or reply to someone else. If you happen to land on some website that you click through an email or a text message that you receive, there are still some things that you can do to help you spot fakes and protect your data. 
The number one thing is to check the URL at the top. If you visit a link that supposedly came from, say, Facebook or TikTok support and the actual link doesn't look like that, then almost 100% it's a fake and it's a phishing attempt. Be extra cautious about login forms because if it is not a legitimate site and it's not a legitimate sender, then chances are they might want to collect your login information for the actual service so that they can go to your account then and like buy stuff. I once lost my iPhone and then for the next weeks or even months, I kept getting text messages saying someone found your phone, click this link and sign into iCloud to see where your phone is and you know, come get retrieve it. The link kind of looked legit and I was grieving my lost phone. So I clicked on it and I went on the site and it asked me to submit my login details. Kind of knowing that it could be a fish, but I wasn't really sure. When I was presented with login form, I just submitted literally gibberish. So my email was like blah blah at blah blah.com and then my password was like one, two, three, four, five, blah blah, which is not really my password, or is it? And so surprisingly, I logged into my own account. That's how I could tell that unfortunately I'm not getting my phone back. It's just a fish and they were just trying to get my iCloud details so that they can unlock my phone and resell it or keep it for themselves or whatever. I don't really want to recommend this because you probably should have never clicked that link in the first place. But if a login form looks dodgy, try with fake details, see what it says. As we saw at the beginning, pretending to be someone else is not always that hard. Message filters, message requests, and spam filters and whatnot, they're constantly getting better, but so are the attackers. Phishing is at least as much about people as it is about technology. But I hope that with the things that we've just discussed, you'll be able to avoid at least some bad people in your life.